we talked yesterday about uh, this idea of polynomial division, okay? It's just like long division for numbers, except we're dealing with polynomials. So since um, a lot of you were here yesterday, for the benefit of those who were, what we'll do is before we tuck into the new stuff, let's just do a really simple example, okay? Good morning. So, for instance, if we draw out our, um, our long division bar, we know how long division normally works. There's a thing that you divide, there's the thing you divide by, then there's your answer and your remainder up the top, okay? Just like in normal numerical division. So, um, come up with an example. What would you like to, let's, let's keep it simple, what would you like to divide by? Give me something monic and linear, just for the sake of it. X plus two, plus two. we'll do the job just fine. Okay, give me a, hand me a cubic in here. So, want to give me a cubic polynomial? Maybe we can start off with, say, oh, I don't know, x cubed. That's pretty Whoa. easy. Should we, should we make it like 3 or something like that? OK. Uh, what else are we going to put in here? Uh, maybe in minus x squared plus 7x minus 4. OK. So what we're going to do here is what we do just like with normal long division. I'm going to go term by term. And um, it ends up being quite long. And well, that's why it's called long division, right? But at least it's not too complicated. So. Morning. We'll begin by saying how many x's fit into 3x cubed. We're, we're focusing on the x's because even though there are constants and other numbers flying around, the x's are clearly the thing that is important here. So how many x's can I do? 3x squared. 3x squared. And you know you did it right because when I do the next step, which is multiply around, uh, it's going to cancel, right? 3x squared times x is 3x cubed. That should eliminate. 3x squared times 2 3x squared is 6x squared. Fantastic. OK, we are awake. That's always good to know. And uh, at this stage, I've got to now take away what I've created here from the previous line. OK, so you've got to watch your negatives because there's lots of them. Minus x squared, take away 6x squared. That's going to be. I'm subtracting, right? So I think it's minus 7x squared. Yes? Again, one of the tricky things about this being polynomial long division is you get negatives, right? When you're dividing by numbers, there are no negatives to be seen, okay? There's a minus 7x squared there. I will bring down this plus 7x, and then I pose the question again. How many x's will fit into this thing? Minus 7x. Right? Just like in place value, you count down like thousands, hundreds, tens. Here, you're counting down powers of x. So you know you're going to have to get to a um, power of 1. I will dutifully multiply back. So I get minus 7x squared minus 14x. I'm now subtracting again. So watch out for the double negative. What will you end up with? 7x. Is that right? Yeah. Minus negative 14x. Um, I will bring down this negative 4, and I'm pretty much there. How many x's fit into 7x? By definition, 7. Plus 7, right? Uh, I go to here, 7x plus 14. My final subtraction is going to land me with? <laughs> yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? Oh, did I do? Yeah. Uh, where are we looking? Where are you looking? Yeah, see, even I, yeah, there you go. Uh, let's fix that, shall we? 21, 21, what does that leave me with? Four, 42? Plus 42? That's convenient. Wait, no, no, no. Oh, I'm doing the wrong line, aren't I? That's, that's the four. You see how easy it is to twist yourself into, yeah, nice. Um, that's 21, and that's 42, isn't it? Yeah. That's more like it. OK, wonderful. Last subtraction. Let's get it right this time. Four Minus 46. <laughs> yeah, OK, right. Now, here's a weird thing. I don't know if this came up in the previous example. But this final number, no x's fit into that. There are, there are no x's in that term. And there's no more stuff to grab onto. OK, so that makes this final term the remainder. Okay. Now, unlike in uh, numerical law and division, you can get remainders that are negative. It's a bit funny, isn't it? Right? You, if, you, if you've got a negative remainder, if you were dividing my numbers, you'd say you've done your division wrong. Okay? Um, but that's fine. This is what this is. Now, I can make a statement out of this. They call it the division statement. Um, I can make an equation that includes 
your divisor, your dividend, your quotient, and your remainder. Four pieces, okay? Here's what the equation would look like. It all starts with the dividend. That's the object you were manipulating, um, that you were dividing by. So we can say that thing, um, oh no, I was writing the wrong thing. Sorry. That's the, that's the quotient. The dividend is here, I was just looking at the wrong line. 3x cubed minus x squared plus 7x minus 4. That's better. Okay, so this thing is your divisor multiplied by your quotient, except that there's the remainder also hanging on, right? So here comes the divisor, x plus 2. Here's your quotient, 3x squared minus 7x plus 21. But if you go ahead and you multiply that out, you don't get the original polynomial. You get the original polynomial with the remainder. Okay, and of course you can go and double check that. That's one of the nice things. You can just expand it out. Um, if you are lazy, you can find something online to you just punch all of that in, and it'll expand it out and confirm that you got what you were supposed to get. Okay, so this is polynomial division in a nutshell. But sometimes you get asked questions. I'm going to now dive into this, where you actually have to put something into um, the dividend or into the divisor that's not there. So here's a really quick example. Okay. If I asked you to divide, let's give some polynomials here. Let's say, let's divide x cubed minus 1 by x plus 2. Okay. x cubed minus 1 by x plus 2. Now, when you have a look at this, you think, okay, well that's no problem. I know how to write uh, the divisor over here, and I also know how to write, I mean, this is as simple as it can get, right? Except for the fact that like we do in numerical long division, if I said to you, hey, um, 1,005, 1,005, that's 1,005 units, but there's actually things in between that aren't there that you write, because how do you write 1,005? You write one, and then you say, well, there are no hundreds, and, and there are no tens, and then there's five units. Right? So in, because we have a place value system, you have to have things in there that indicate where the value is zero. Right? Does that make sense? Now because polynomial long division is built on numerical long division, we end up with the same problem over here. How many x squared terms are there? There are none. So you have to say that there are none. Right? Um, how many x terms are there? And the answer is there are none. And then there's the minus one. There's a constant. Okay. Now, you can see how this is going to play in. Just like if we were dividing something like this by 7, right? Um, it, it factors in in just the same way. Have a look. How many x's fit into x cubed? Answer, x squared. You multiply back, and then you realize, oh, when I'm doing my next steps, right, it doesn't just skip all of this stuff and then go straight to the negative 1. That wouldn't make sense, because you'd have x squared terms trying to muck around with a constant term. Just like in place value, your thousands line up with thousands, hundreds with hundreds, tens with tens, etc. So here I've got to now do the subtraction. Yes? Uh, yeah, of course it is. Sorry, there we go. So I'm going to do my subtraction now. That all cancels out. This is going to leave me with minus 2x squared. And then I bring down the 0x that's there. Okay? Um, I ask this question again. That's going to be minus 2x. Yeah, are you with me now? So you can see, I mean, the process is all the same, right? But you have to know to be able to say, oh, there's, there's nothings. <laughs> and the nothings kind of matter, right? Uh, what have I got here? Minus 4x. Double negative there. Yeah, so what do I end up with? 4x. Take away 1. How many x's are in there? 4 of them. 4x plus 8. Final line? Minus 9. So that's my remainder. Are you okay with that? So, missing terms. Please take note. They're not there, but when you do the division, you must say that there's nothing there because that's obviously part of the process. You can see where that uh, 0x squared has to be used and that 0x also has to be used. Okay.